Dynamic Computing, and this is episode four of the 10-minute Amiga Retrocast. Now, our Amigas, there hasn't been a new Commodore Amiga made in 25 or so years. There have been some, some other Amigas made since then, but Commodore's been out of business for a long time. But they're still making some hardware for our little toys. Uh, one company that's making a lot of hardware and does a great, fantastic job is a company out of Germany called uh, Individual Computers. Now, Individual Computers makes all kinds of great things, like the um, MK2 uh, flicker fixture for the A1200 line. Uh, they, they make the XSurf 100 for our big box Amigas, which give us a 100 base T Ethernet. Just tons and tons of hardware. One other piece of hardware that they make that I'm really fond of is the Rapid Road USB adapter. And look what I have here, a Rapid Road USB adapter. Now this little guy, it of course came in a little static proof box. This is the little guy right here and it has all the USB chips right on board. It has a header if you want to use it in an A1200 or another system that has a clock board. It has a header to use on the XSurf 100. Uh, it has a 9-pin header for USB devices that I'll be getting into a little bit more in a moment. And then it has two power connectors, floppy type power connectors. One of them is for bringing power into the unit. The other is kind of a pass-through in case you are limited in your, your floppy space. Now, this came with a little plastic cover over it because they assumed this was going to go in an A1200. You have to remove the little plastic cover with a couple of little plastic uh, nuts in order to use it on the XSurf. Um, they didn't really go over that in the, in the little manual, in the little brochure that came with it, but I'll be covering that too. It also came with a little cable here to hook up to the clock port you have to be incredibly careful how you align this. If you can see it says red on there, you have to make sure the red stripe lines up with that, and then you have to make sure it plugs into your A1200 the proper direction into the clock port, or you can fry your rapid road very quickly. Now, when you plug it into an XSurf 100, there's only one way it can go in, so there's, there's not much uh, failure that can happen there. But do be careful handling this and make sure you're, you're grounded so you don't zap the little chips on there. Uh, also comes with a little uh, extender for your um, power and it comes with a little USB that can plug into your system. A USB header. I won't be using most of those accessories because it is going in my A4000 tower. Now you'll notice on the XSurf, right here, it has a header that's designed expressly for the Rapid Road. The Rapid, the XSurf also has two USB ports that are on the device, but are completely inactive until you plug in your your Rapid Road. They just simply don't do a single thing. They don't even supply power, as far as I know. Um, now it's fairly easy to slot this little guy in here. You want to supply a little extra power to your USB devices. So just take power from the floppy connector. Now I happen to have a little splitter here that gives me an extra uh, power supply. And they say that you can plug it into either one. I plug it into that one. Now, here's the, tr here's the funny thing. They have this USB header on here for when you use it on the A1200. But when you plug it into an XSurf, it expects you to use the two USB ports that are on the XSurf itself. I had some questions about this, and I, I presented them to the guys on the, uh, the English Amiga board, and I got some uh, contradictory answers. But if you try and use this header plugged into an XSurf, I had a terrible experience. Some people say it would have deactivated these two onboard ports and then this would work fine. Some people say you can use both at the same time. Here's what I found out. When 
I plugged my compact flash and SD card reader into this header and had it plugged into the computer, the USB went wonky. I plug a flash drive in the back, it would be recognized, it worked fine for 30 seconds, then it would say, oh, your flash drive's died, it's been disconnected. I plug something into the front, into my uh, compact flash and SD reader, it come up, and then it would disappear, and then it would come up, and then it would disappear. Absolutely 100% unreliable. So what I assume is when it's plugged into the XSurf, it activates this header and these USB ports, but you can't use them at the same time. And if you try, it confuses the daylights out of it because it has no clue where to, probably where to send the data. So it just, it back and forth and confuses it. So if you use it on a big box Amiga, don't use these ports. They just, they're not gonna do anything. And the instructions that come with the, with the Rapid Road say next to nothing about it. So this little guy, go and you'll know it's it's plugged in because it's just a nice little snug fit on there there's no other cables you have to plug in you can ignore the clock board adapter ignore the other uh, power header there now we can just power on our Amiga so now that the rapid road is installed in the big box Amiga here uh, the next thing that you would need to do is load the Poseidon USB stack now, the guys at Individual Computers are kind enough to license version 4.5 of the Poseidon USB stack for us. Fantastic. But, it was not in the box at all. Now, I knew that going in, but if you're just a, somebody just buying this off, the, off of a, a media kit or something, you may not realize that it just does not come with the software. It's just physically not in there. So you've got this new toy, you plug it in, and nothing doesn't work. Now, they offer it as a free download off their website, which is great, except for those people who don't have a way to get LHA files, the compressed LHA files, from their PC or Mac that they download them on over to the Amiga. Now, just put it on a couple of floppies. Just compress it, put it on a couple of floppies, throw it in the box, charge an extra dollar or something for the cost of the floppy disks. Put it on a CD, they're what, 15 cents, 20 cents a piece, something like that, you buy them in bulk. Burn it on a CD for those people who have CDs on their Amiga, so quite a few of us do. Um, once it's installed, version 4.5 of the Poseidon, we can go into our prefs here and launch the software. Now here's the actual Trident 4.5 interface. If you click on controllers, it tells you that the Rapid Road XS100 USB device is online. Now, under devices, it's going to tell us what we have on here. It's saying that I have a, a generic USB 2 hub running at high speed, which is the up theoretical 480 megabits per second. You'll never see that speed, but it theoretically supports it. Then it says I have a generic USB hub running at full speed, which is the 12 megabits per second. I use that for um, like my mouse and things like that. Just things that are low power, I can hook up to a, a low power hub. Um, shows a mass storage device, which is a really cool device I'll show you in a second. My optical mouse and uh, another mass storage device. Now, here, if you plug in things like a, an Ethernet adapter, for example, plug, it's going to happen. You saw the little pop-up right there, and it said that it discovered uh, a DSB650TX USB adapter. Full speed, which means it's the, the 12 megabits per second, and then it's trying to bind it to this particular adapter class here. Now these different classes do different things. Bluetooth, uh, HID is like keyboard and mice, hub are your, your USB hubs, mass storage for your, your different devices, your, your large ones. Um, 
USB audio, USB video, which I like to play around with and see what they can do. But it tries to map it to a particular uh, USB binding so the Amiga knows what to do with it. In this case, it detected it was an Ethernet adapter. In theory, I could set that up with uh, something like a Roadshow, TCPIP, or Miami, or Genesis, and get online with that adapter. You can also do fancy things like power cycle your USB, turn everything off, and then turn it back on again. What I mainly use my USB for is a nice USB mouse, because they work a thousand times better than the Amiga mice do. Uh, no jumping around, they're, 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 they work really nice. And I use it for mass storage devices. Now I've got a card reader, so I can use it to transfer data between my Amiga 1200 and my 4000 and my uh, UAE installation on my PC with uh, flash drives or compact flash cards like this one here. And they work absolutely perfectly. They just plug right in. Like in this case, here's a nice uh, standard flash drive. I'm going to plug it into my slow hub here. And should recognize it. Yep, there it is. right here 12.3 gigs in use show all files and it shows me what's on this particular USB drive now, these USB devices uh, are fairly quick they I can usually get about three to six megabits per second out of a USB flash drive